Good morning. Morning, Adrian. I just made you co-host, so you should be able to share now. Okay. Good morning, Kelsey. Good, Good morning, morning, folks. My Zoom decided to run an update as I oh. was logging on to the, you of know, course. part for the course today. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can test out my share screen, but then I'll undo it again. Kelsey, are you now seeing life design at BGSU without a lot of extra things around it? I can see all the extra things around it, like the PowerPoint notes and the slides and stuff. Oh, so you're still seeing like a PowerPoint view, not a slide view. Yes. All right. Hang tight, folks, while we try to fix that. <laughs> Let's see here. It's been a while since I've had to do Zoom share screen from this computer and it's being interesting. So let's see here. Welcome everyone. We'll get started here in just a minute or so. Are you still seeing, now we're good? Now we're good, that looks great, yep. Excellent, okay, at the risk of it changing, I'm gonna like not touch it. We're just gonna let it hang out up there. <laughs> um, in the meantime, I would love if folks would drop into the chat um, your name, what area of campus you're from and how long you have been at BGSU. You're 26, Trinka. <laughs> Exciting. Again, welcome. If you could drop your name into the chat, um, what area of campus you are from and how long you have been here. Are we at some five months, 10 years, six years?
If anyone is just joining us, please drop into the chat your name, what area of campus you work in, and how long you've been here. Kim Morgan just started. Welcome, Kim. <laughs> All right, well, I want to be respectful of everyone's time, um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Kelsey, if anyone joins in um, or has a question and I don't see it pop up, let me know. Feel free to interrupt me. So um, as we get started, um, you know, this is an introduction to life design and particularly um, my role here at the Jeffrey H. Radville Center for College and Life Design. Um, I have a few slides just to share a little bit of an overview of um, life design at BGSU for some of you who have been on campus for quite a while. Um, some of this may be repeats, some of this may be information that has um, evolved or changed. And for those um, new to campus, again, just to give you a general overview. Um, we will be doing some subsequent workshops throughout the fall um, that will go a bit more into depth into particular tools or aspects of the life design curriculum. Um, and we'll open that up to faculty and staff. But this morning is really just meant to be a general overview. Um, if you have any particular questions or reasons for being on this call beyond wanting that general introductory information, don't hesitate to drop that in the chat or um, we should have plenty of time for questions and discussions afterwards. Um, we'll see if this ends up taking the full hour or not. I know it's a really busy season for all of us. And so I appreciate um, you being here and thanks to Chelsea and Kelsey in the Center for Faculty Excellence for scheduling this opportunity uh, to give an overview about life design at BGSU and where we are with that. So I'm going to start just by talking a little bit about myself and how I ended up here. Um, so my name is Adrian Osdemore. I am the Executive Director of the Radville Center for College and Life Design, and I started here at BGSU in January. Um, and without going too far into my backstory, um, I had been at the University of Dayton for almost 20 years prior to coming here. Um, I had been doing a lot of work there around design thinking, creative problem solving. I was working in an area out of the provost's office that had piloted both micro-credentials, um, a design thinking summer accelerator program, um, and I had also been doing a lot of work around life design, in particular as it related to the um, Catholic Marianist aspects of the university um, and a focus on vocation for our students. So um, I have been doing a lot of work in um, design thinking uh, with our students um, when the book Designing Your Life came out in about 2017. Uh, or 2016, and I was fortunate enough to attend Stanford University's first uh, studio for university educators back in 2017. And so I then um, took the curriculum back to Dayton and had been teaching it there until I came here. Um, but I had been paying a lot of attention to what was happening in other universities who were also integrating the curriculum and the framework and had been closely, you know, following what was happening here at BGSU um, around life design and just thought it was a really exciting opportunity when this position um, presented itself um, and has been a really fortunate really fortunate um, opportunity for me to take the work that I had been doing and come and be part of this signature initiative here. So with that, I'm going to give a little bit of an overview and background on how I have been describing life design since I got here. Um, my role uh, connect uh, reports up through the president's office. So, um, you know, since I've gotten here, I've had meetings with the board, I've had meetings with constituents all across campus. Um, if you are someone who I have not yet connected with, and you'd like to connect about your program or how, um, you know, how our office might better support what's happening in your program, um, please don't hesitate to reach out after this or, you know, drop a note in the chat or um, Kelsey can also help connect us as well. 
Um, so this diagram that I have up here is really just a general overview of the life design ecosystem here at BGSU. And so although, you know, until pretty recently, life design was formally really only part of my office and the life design coaches and their role, um, the goal is really that life design is a part of the culture of BGSU, that it is something that helps differentiate us as a university um, and that it appears in lots of different ways in the ways we support our students in the classroom and the ways we support our students outside of the classroom. And so I start this by saying that although it might be in my job title and, lot, and not in others, um, fundamentally when we think about students and helping them to design their lives, to design their college experiences, this is really intended to include everyone as part of this ecosystem. Um, and so in this diagram here, you can see two things sort of at the center of this initiative. Um, and so the Jeffrey H. Radbill Center for College and Life Design is my office. I have a team of 11 life design coaches. Um, we are located in Central Hall right now. Um, we will be moving in January. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and we are really charged with working with students in particular as they transition into the college experience. Um, we teach the BGSU 1910 course, which is Designing Your Life. Um, and that course is designed to teach students some of the fundamentals of design thinking and mindsets that will support their um, experience as a learner here at the university and then also one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'll go into more of those details. Um, we also have the Michael and Sarah Colleen Hub for Career Design and Connections. And this is an expansion of our current career center and student employment services. The goal of this hub is to better connect what's happening in the academic programs, the experiential learning opportunities, the alumni who want to be connected with campus, um, and the ways that we are able to support our students holistically um, from everything from resume review to being able to um, work directly with an alum or professional in an industry that they are interested in. But it isn't just happening in these two areas. Um, and also just a quick note for those of you who are new or for those of you who have um, been here for a long time, both of these areas were just named in April as the result of a $13.5 million in gifts um, towards student success. So um, there is an article about that um, on the BGSU website that talks a little bit more about Jeff Radbill and Mike Colleen's commitment to this uh, initiative. Um, and to the university as a whole. Um, and around this diagram, you just see just a few of the campus partners that have been directly part of this uh, initiative thus far, um, Ames and Honors College and TRIO and Thompson and the Marvin Center, they are all integrating life design into their programs with their students. Um, and then as we continue to build up what this hub can do for our students, that of course also um, involves engaging alum, alumni and faculty mentors and, um, you know, uh, employers and, you know, the, the, the greater constituents externally of this area. Okay, now we're gonna see if my clicky marks. Okay, so one of the things I say at orientation to students is that they might've heard about life design throughout the orientation process and through the admissions process. And even the phrase life design can be a bit of a misnomer, right? So I'm coming to college, I just finished high school and now you want me to have my entire life design life designed and figured out. And that's really not what we mean by that. Life design is really meant as a wayfinding tool. In particular, we want to empower students to have the agency to design their future one step at a time. And some of that comes from this idea that as students enter college, a lot of things can appear as a checklist, things they have to do, things they have to pay, graduation requirements, and all of those things are incredibly important. But as we think about how that is received by our students, um, a checklist can really present this idea that either A, I have to have everything figured out about my entire four-year experience before I even start, or B, everything is already prescribed for me and I just have to check the boxes as I go along the way. And what we'd like to foster instead is this idea that it's a journey. 
again, this wayfinding analogy. So we know that life doesn't happen in a really nice, neat, straight line, twists and turns. We've all had twists and turns in our own careers, our own lives. The last two years have presented new challenges for all of us that we never could have imagined. And so instead we want students to really feel like they have the skills to adapt and pivot along the way so that they can make those decisions, they can handle those ups and downs and challenges that they're gonna face both in college and beyond. And so with that, we talk about the analogy of a compass. Um, and as I tell students, I know you don't normally use a compass. We all use GPS on our phone, but let's think about the differences. So when I put um, an address in my phone, I started at BGSU in January. So I, I mean, BG is not that easy to get lost in, but I still sometimes don't know where I'm going. So I put it in the address and Siri tells me, turn right, turn left, turn right, turn left. And when we do that, we're so focused on the final destination, we're really not paying any attention to how we get there. Um, we're just following blindly. And instead, we want our students to think about college and their tool for college as more of a compass. Um, instead of being told exactly a certain path, recognizing that we want them to have a true north, an end goal in mind, right? That degree, their, their major that they've selected. Um, but we want them to realize that there are lots of different ways to get there. Um, and yes, some of their course requirements and course structures aren't giving them, you know, there are certainly limitations to how twisty that path can be, um, but there are lots of other aspects of their college experience, um, and we want to be, a, we want to prepare them to be able to navigate an unknown future, whether that's happening here while they're on campus, or if those are the skills that they're going to encounter in the workforce and the world um, beyond this campus. And my slides just went back, so let's see. Okay, um, so what does that compass look like here? Um, so again, depending on how long you've been at VG, you may have seen this diagram before. Um, we want to focus on the whole student. And so the academic experience of our students is incredibly important. Obviously, they are here to get a degree. They need to complete courses and, and attend class to get that degree. But we also want to make sure that as a campus, we're supporting them in these four areas as well. And to be clear, this isn't all happening out of my office. You know, we are just... Uh, a, a channel, a vessel, one, one possible place that students can get support in some of these areas. And so we want them to build connections on campus, connections with their peers. We want them to feel like they are have a sense of belonging in this community. We want our students to be able to prioritize their well-being. So how do we foster our students' ability to get the resources and support they need for their mental well-being, their physical well-being, their spiritual well-being, if applicable, and their financial well-being? We want them to jumpstart their career. Um, so although you know lots of things could change and they may eventually end up in jobs that don't even exist yet, we wanna make sure that they aren't waiting until graduation day to think about their career. A lot of that is of course supported in your areas across campus. Um, and then we want them to do all of that with a sense of purpose. Um, and again, this isn't about finding one life purpose at the age of 18. This is really just about understanding why am I here at BGSU, what is important to me, and where am I trying to go? And so with that comes this idea of a BGSU team. So um, this is one that was used in orientation. You can see it's got faculty, resident advisors, academic advisors and planners, peer mentors, family members, career center, right? Our students are not doing this journey of college alone. They are influenced and supported by so many people across campus, including everyone on this call. And so the life design coaches are really just meant to be one piece of that team and to help students think about who is on their team um, and how can they seek those resources and connections um, that exist on campus. And so with that, um, what are students actually learning in BJSU 1910? And so to try and keep it as simple as possible, the life design framework is based around two primary areas. Um, the first one is a set of mindsets um, and mindsets really is practices. So how can we teach these mindsets to our students? <clears throat> these were originated, excuse me, originated at Stanford's life design lab. Um, these are mildly adapted for our purposes. 
<coughs> excuse me. Um, and we want students to practice these mindsets. So this isn't about memorizing the list of concepts. We want them to practice these mindsets over and over and over again. We want them to share their story, to understand that they each bring a unique perspective, experiences, and identities to this campus. Um, and how can they share that with others? We want them to be curious, to ask questions, to be engaged learners, to be seeking new information and new perspectives. We want them to be able to reframe when something doesn't quite go right or something doesn't quite seem to align with maybe their previous experiences or they get stuck on a particular problem. How might we encourage students to look at it from a different perspective or different lens? We want them to collaborate. This means in the classroom. This means collaborating with others outside of the classroom. We want them to take action so in, let's not be um, bystanders of our own lives, but what can students do, even small actions, to make a positive difference in their weekly schedule, in their college experience? And again, thinking about sort of small steps, right? What could I do this week to um, get more sleep or improve some of my study skills or meet with someone who works in the field that I might be interested in? And then we want them to embrace that this is a process, um, that they are always learning and iterating and things are going to continue to change and ebb and flow. And in really simple terms, you know, these mindsets are not completely foreign subjects. You all foster these in different ways in your own areas. And we're, we really just want to emphasize that students are building that growth mindset um, and that as they practice it in BJSU 1910 or other areas, we want them to, of course, practice this in the classroom across campus as well. And then the other piece that they're learning is the design thinking process. Um, so the design thinking process is a creative problem solving framework um, that originated out of Stanford and IDEO, um, but it's used in industries globally and regionally. Um, Intel uses design thinking, education uses design thinking, technology uses design thinking, lots of different areas in between. Um, and so we wanna make sure that our students are learning this process as well, um, because it's something that they're likely to be using in the workforce. And so it can help set them apart in an internship or a co-op experience if they have this skill set as well. Um, and that design thinking process is articulated in this graphic as accept, empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. Um, and you'll see different variations of this, you know, on different websites, um, but ultimately this idea that in order to solve a complicated and challenging issue, um, how might we think about the users, the people impacted, learn more about that? How do we define what the problem or issue actually is? How do we generate lots of ideas and then narrow that down into something that we can try and prototype that we can, with minimal risk, maximize our learning, test something out, and then iterate from there. And that's something we want our students to also apply to their own lives, their college experiences, and even problems they're having in their daily lives. So with that, just a little bit more about the 1910 course. So we have, I think, 37 sections of BGSU 1910 this fall. The majority of them are being taught by life design coaches. Some are being taught by our partners in Thompson, TRIO, Chapman Learning Community, EDHD um, Learning Community, Jen Falcon, um, and I'm sure I'm missing one that I'm gonna remember later. Um, and so this one credit seminar is designed to do three main things. One, we wanna foster and support students as they design academic career and life experiences that align with who they are, what they value, um, and what they wanna do in life. Uh, we want them to connect with peers in an open and affirming environment. We want them to build that sense of belonging and community. So a lot of what happens in the classroom is based around that interaction with each other, that sharing of their story, um, empathizing with new perspectives. And then we want them to build the foundational level of design thinking skills um, that can they can use both in their college experience, but also can help set them apart in internships and, and future employment. 
Uh, so as we think about this fall, depending on the area of study or program participation, some incoming students are automatically assigned a life design coach and enrolled in BGSU 1910. Those decisions were made in consultation with deans, a deans, and or department chairs. Um, and in most cases, um, if a program opted out, it's either because of the course structure of that program, didn't allow for as much wiggle room, um, or uh, there are other ways in that program that students are being directly supported in these same concepts. Um, but all students have the opportunity to engage with life design and meet with a coach. And so I say that just as an open invitation, if the, you ever encounter a student who might um, benefit from chatting with a life design coach, um, don't ever hesitate to reach out to our office or have them fill out the interest form on our website. So I apologize that this list is a little small, but I wanted to just put it here just so that if you wanted to look and see your college, your area, um, these are the programs that have been auto-enrolled in BGSU 1910. And again, that's being determined, um, that was determined by the deans, a deans, department chairs, et cetera. Um, I in, have since had some follow-up conversations. We'll be re-engaging with you know, the school of business and figuring out what that's going to look like moving forward. Our friends in criminal justice studies, I might be saying that wrong. I'm still learning um, some of the lingo, but um, they are integrating into their first year course. Honors integrates it into their critical thinking course. So it's happening in some ways. LEAD 1000 includes a life design aspect through the Marvin Center. So um, it exists in other places, but this is one of the areas. Um, I also wanna say we're paying a lot of attention to our deciding students and our undecided students in particular this year, um, working really closely with Sarah Jordan in the deciding student program. But that does not mean that the curriculum, the course or the coaching is based entirely on this idea that students are undecided. Um, it, can, it can work in lots of different ways. And of course, um, life design doesn't end with a one credit course. We offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. The life design team is available to support and engage with any student throughout their journey. Um, our goal is not to talk students out of things or talk students into things. We're really just a generalist that students can come chat with about anything from the things they're interested in, the ways they'd like to get involved on campus, the people that they are engaging with on a daily basis, the academic or career areas that they're exploring. Um, and then our job is to help refer them to others and make sure that they are able to connect if they're really interested interested in architecture, for example, we want to make sure that they get connected to the faculty and the people in that program so that they can um, move forward with those ideas and interests. And again, with this graphic, I just want to share again that life design can be beneficial for any type of student. Um, so a student who's undecided, um, the life design framework and coaching offers them an opportunity to think about the different things they're interested in and ways that they might prototype and take action to learn more about what they do like or try something and discover that they don't like it so they can cross that off the list and move on. Um, life design can benefit students who have chosen an academic and career path but are curious about other things. Maybe they are in business or communications, but they're also really interested in sustainability, and so they want to think about ways they might connect those pieces. Um, and a life design can also be beneficial for someone who is really driven on their path um, and wants to maximize the opportunities that they can engage in while they're here in college to make sure that they're really um, set for success. And with that, I just want to show a little bit of a preview. These are early renderings, so the spaces are going to look a little bit different. But um, if you walked past the math and science building, you might have noticed big fences and cranes and no windows um, as of the other day. And um, we will be, the Radville Center will be located on the third floor which is actually the second floor when you're looking at this view. Um, and so that space will open in January. Um, and the goal of that space, the majority of the space is actually set up for the students and how the students can use it. So um, lots of casual gathering spaces, study spaces, collaborative workspaces, um, huddle rooms. Um, we've got you know places for students to gather and eat, 
uh, places for students to have a karaoke night or a trivia night. Um, we're excited about the ways we might work with students across campus to engage in that space. Um, and then our team will also be based out of there um, for coaching. And with that, I think that ends my slides. Um, I'm gonna unshare, but I can also drop this information into the chat. Um, and then we've got, you know, up to, I think 20 minutes or so. Um, if people have questions in dialogue, I'd love personally to know a little bit more for folks that have been on campus, maybe what your experience or engagement has been with life design or about life design. Um, and for folks that are new, I, you know, I'd love to know what questions you might have or things that you um, would like to know more about in the future. You can also drop something in the chat too. <laughs> Does the university plan on hiring or certifying more, you know, additional life coaches? Is eleven enough? Um. So right now, um, I'm actually authorized to have twelve. So we're we're we've got some ebb and flow right now. Um. At this point, the number of coaches um does meet the number of students that are currently being auto enrolled. And so I think, um, to hire more would be based on if more students were receiving were in part of 1910 or more students were seeking more active coaching. Um. So at this point in time, I. I'm treating 12 to 15 as sort of the zone. Um, it doesn't mean that couldn't change in the future. I think one of the things that I am also trying to prioritize is how is this embedded in other parts of a student's experience? And so, um, you know, are there other ways and other programs where they're getting parts of this um, that it doesn't always have to come from our office? Thanks for that question. Other questions, curiosities? It's okay if there isn't. We're all doing a thousand things. <laughs> Kelsey, any questions from your end? You, you used to be over in this area. <laughs> yeah, Anything you hear from in what area before I moved over to <laughs> CFE? Um, are there any sort of conversations with incorporating? faculty into the life design process or is it still kind of being um, distributed through the coaches in the first year seminar? Thanks. Yes, I would love for faculty to be more engaged in this process. So I've started to meet some across campus. Um, I've been working with President Rogers to eventually create a faculty advisory council or, or whatever that name ends up being. Um, if you are someone who would like to be involved, I'd love to chat more. Um, I've had some really great conversations with faculty who have been integrating elements of either the formal life design framework because they were in an earlier training, or maybe they just do things with their students that, you know, just are very naturally aligned to the concepts I um, just shared. Um, and so, you know, I think, Melissa, I just saw you pop on the screen and, and I'm remembering an early, early conversation where we talked about some modules that co-op students are doing. Um, and so I, I would love to um, faculty to feel like they are involved in this process um, as to the extent that 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 interest um, exists for sure. Yeah, and I was going to ask a question about how, uh, because my role specifically with cooperative education, and so I'm working to try to thread the life design theories, methodology, mm -hmm. me methodologies, and terminology into the co-op conversation, but what's the vision for life design and how that's going to be sort of like integrated with the Career Center um, and what mm -hmm. they're yeah, no, thank you for that question. And side note, it's funny that you're on this call because I was just thinking the other day we needed to reconnect because I wanted to make sure you had some updated materials. Um, so uh, the Career Center right now, so Danielle Dimoff is the director of the Career Center. And when this hub was announced, a, um, a position of executive director of that hub was created. Um, that position has not yet been filled. And so I think one of the things in particular, um, a lot of my role is focused on that introductory experience. How are we helping to set students up for success in that first year or two? Um, but the goal then is to make sure that as students 
students make some of those decisions and things that they want to prototype and try, right, that the career center, the career hub is able to um, really help elevate what that might be. Um, and, you know, I, of course, don't know exactly how some of your areas might work with the Career Center now, um, but I think it's really, to me, the things I know about that executive director role and that hub is that that also is meant to be a conduit and a connector. So we don't want to, the goal is not to replace what's happening in the academic programs, but how do we help foster and make sure that students are able to, you know, connect to those resources as needed. And also that we're able to support the work you all are doing as well. Melissa, I don't know if that answered your question, but <laughs> thanks. I meant to unclick. <clears throat> yes, no, that helps. I I figured that there wasn't a big, like a complete vision yet, but I was just, I know how, you know, from my perspective, my role, that I need to start the conversation early about mm -hmm. co-op so they can mm -hmm. start thinking about it early, but not overwhelm them too much. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, and I think in those instances, and I think, you know, the co-op model is a great example of we want students to try things out early so that they can figure out what they really enjoy and what they find really engaging and what they don't, you know. Right. Um, Brandy always says in the admissions panels, you know, if you major in something, we want you to figure out if it's not for you. We'd love for you to figure that out now and not once you get a job in four years. Um, and also, you know, even within each field, there are many different, you know, paths. And so how can that co-op experience or other internship experiences or even experiential learning experiences happening in the classroom? How are students then making meaning of those experiences and then thinking about, oh, I really enjoyed this. So in the future, I want to be able to prioritize a job or a career path or even a geographical location that does this or I really hated this part of this internship I did. So I wanna make sure I'm not moving in a direction that I would be doing that all day, every day. Yeah, Brandy and I started right around the same time. So I think we're, our mindsets are like, <laughs> like those are the same yeah. kinds of things I say to students, so. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. So any other questions? How long do the coaches work with their assigned students? Is it? The first two years or is it the until they graduate? Um, at this moment, it is as long as a student would like to meet with that coach. So after the first semester, there's no requirement for coaching. We certainly encourage it, especially in that first year. Um, the, the vision of the hub includes... Um, some some additional pieces. Uh, career connector is one term that has come up. I don't know if that would be someone's actual job title or not. Um, but the goal is that, you know, there comes a certain point where a student might ebb and flow in and out of the life design office. And so maybe in their first semester, we're trying to get them acclimated to campus. We're trying to make sure they, they have found an academic home that they felt connected in different ways. Um, and then, you know, we have students in, in um, our caseloads now that, you know, okay, I discovered I really like this path. I want to meet with someone who works in this industry. I've gotten connected to a faculty mentor. I'm good. I see my life design coach in the food court. I say, hello, I'm good. Um, but then realize, hey, we're here. You are always welcome to come back. So if, you know, a student has a situation, maybe their second year or their third year, where suddenly they're feeling a bit lost or, hey, I just want to check in, um, they can certainly. So there is not like a clear cutoff at year two. Um, and we've also tried to move away from the vocab of you're going to be with this coach until graduation. Um, not that they can't be, but I also, you know, just even you know, as we all know, there are ebbs and flows in workforce and people switch positions. And so we also don't want to set up a false narrative of, you know, Kelsey is going to be your person every single day of your college experience because Kelsey may have her own life design that, you know, might change. Um, not that Kelsey's a life design coach, but she probably could be. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, thanks, Kelsey. I appreciate that. So I think President Rogers and I usually both describe it as like sort of a, it can, you know, ebb and flow, weave in and out, depending on, you know, other mentors and, and folks on campus they're working directly with. All right. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to drop my email in the um, chat. Um, 
And please don't ever hesitate to reach out. I'd love to chat with any of you more. Thanks so much, Adrian. Thank you. Have a great day. We all got a little bit of time back to work on something else, right? <laughs>